Hello, I'm Irish Stephen Bear, and I'm here with the Sci-Fi Sisters. to the Sci-Fi Sisters podcast, where we give you our point of view. I'm Tamia Harper, and I'm joined today by my sisters, Yvette Blackman-Tom. Hello. Sabrina Wood. Whoop, whoop. And Fran T. What's happening? What's happening, Fran, is (laughs) that we have a guest with us today that literally has us all and trying really hard not to fangirl. <laughs> I, I, I know. I, I'm trying to be so, 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 so cool right now because <laughs> the brother has the coolest beard in the universe. That's number one. <laughs> and number two, he's responsible for our favorite, favorite, favorite Star Trek. I'm not even going to mess around and tell y'all. Y'all, you know who we're talking about. We're talking about none only than Iris Stephen Bear. Thank you so much for joining us. Yay! We are, we couldn't even be more ecstatic that you're here. And like we were saying before we started, we are huge, huge, huge DS9 fans. All of us, to a T, DS9, hands down, is our favorite show. So to be sitting here talking to somebody who had a direct hand in creating the awesomeness that is DS9 is just like a dream come true. And, you know, we know you're a regular man and you put your pants on one leg at a time. But Who told you this? <laughs> I cut my sources. Do you have cameras in here? Is <laughs> we got sources, baby. <laughs> I say so. But um, before we get to DS9 talk, yes. I got to go back way back mm-hmm. because you are also part of one of my foundational childhood memories, which is fame. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I know, right? I remember <laughs> that show being on, and I remember thinking that this is what high school was like. <laughs> and man, I couldn't wait to get there. <laughs> that was must see TV. Yes. Back in mm-hmm. the day. That was must see TV. My wife still says that I was never happier. I never came home happier from a job, less stressed out, even though there were plenty of times I was stressed out, but just much more upbeat and easy to be with than when I was doing fame. Wow. Clearly, I mean, partly I, I didn't even become a producer until the last season. Uh, so I didn't ha- quite have the responsibilities that I- I've had on other shows, but uh, I just, I like the people I was working with a lot. Not that I didn't like them on other shows, but um, I could literally fall out of bed. And if I wanted to walk to, at the time, this is how long ago it was, MGM. we stood in the parking lot the day they took the gigantic mgm sign and and people were weeping people who'd been with mgm Mm. for years who it was like the height of show business and and film were weeping in the parking lot as as they took down that sign but i liked a lot um i liked uh I had interesting relationships with a lot of the kids who were featured on the show as actors. Uh, I love Debbie. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, she was, mm-hmm. she was fantastic. Uh, there were a lot of there were a lot of good people. There was, I mean, I don't want to tell stories out of school, but <laughs> just tell them, tell them. Yeah, it, 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 the it was the eighties. Yeah. Which wasn't quite the seventies, it was <laughs> the eighties. Right. So you could walk into the closest bathroom 
closest men's room to the dance uh, rehearsal hall. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you would find a spray of blood on the wall from where someone had jacked up. Mm-hmm. Uh, it yeah. was, it was, there was a lot of freaky stuff yeah. going Not in the writer's room. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. no. Um, in the stages. And then, uh, you know, the, the first season I was there, Janet Jackson was on the show. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Uh, I met her dad. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it was just, it was just, it was a great time. And I was doing what I wanted to do. You know, I had been on another show before that. It was just, it was just, I have nothing but, uh, Fond memories, and and just yesterday, uh, I you know we're picketing, uh, and I just walked for you know three hours yesterday with uh, Mike McGreevy, who was on that show with me for wow. years. You know, we wrote it together, we produced it in the last season together, and we're still close friends. And and uh, so yeah, fame keeps on giving. So wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, Weren't you really young when you were working on that show? Oh, yeah, man. I was still at, you know, three times a day they had to change my diapers. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean, man. (laughs) I have to say, as time goes on, I realized I wasn't that much older than the some of the kids on (laughs) were not exactly kids. Right. You know? There was a lot of uh, fudging of ages as it Mm -hmm. turned out later. But, uh, you know, it was just, it, it was, it was a, a really good time, uh, in my life. I, I, you know, I was set up by one of the other writers on the show, set up on a blind date with the woman who became my wife, Aww. uh, who danced, who was a professional ballerina and they needed a ballerina for the episode when Nicole had been killed in a car accident and they needed someone to do a, the, the dance of death, the ballet dance of death. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and my wife did it on the show. So she got to work on the show. So that was fun. Uh, it was just a good time. It was just mm-hmm. a good time. And, you know, um, we were, I think it was my, I think it was Mike. I, I forget that it was Mike or myself, but we were in the uh, Gable building in the offices that Rod Serling had when he did the Twilight Zone. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, my being God. in that was just so, of course, I was a lot younger, and I was very much impressed with Hollywood history. So just thinking of that mind being in that space was uh, was a kick, you know? Yeah, yeah you could hear, was, the kick. hear the voice now. My God. And, and the Gable <laughs> building. Okay, I'm, I'm yeah, loving Gable. it. Yeah, Gable. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> if you Sabrina will. will. <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah, so thanks for mentioning. And also, you know, just we we used to have, uh, if, if fan letters would come to the uh, show and it wasn't addressed to a specific actor, if it was sent to a specific actor, they would wherever it went to their people, whatever. But if it just said fame, mm-hmm. you get boxes of mail that were just dumped in our office, right? Wow. Because they didn't wow. know what to do with it. So <laughs> whenever we got like tired or or too stressed out, we'd open up these letters. Some of them written with pencil. I mean, young kids, mm-hmm. age, you know, and you just read these very simple, heartfelt you know, how much the show meant to them and how much Gene Anthony Ray meant to them. Oh, man. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, it was just, I, I, you know, at that time in my life, I was just amazed that I was sitting at MGM opening up fan mail. You know, <laughs> just, you know whether it was sent to me or not didn't matter. Right. I didn't right. know who I was, but that was that was fun. Oh, it's like That was a great show. Really was. I love that show. Yeah. And, you know, and Ira, you you didn't go to Juilliard, did you? Did you go to um you went to no, you were uh, of- uh, the School of uh, the Performing Arts. I actually I, I haven't mentioned this in many years, but I will say it to you. Um, <laughs> well, well it'll be our secret. I actually I actually auditioned. Wow, I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> 
I actually auditioned for the School of the Performing Arts because there was a little period of time mm-hmm. where I, I, that I wanted to act, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I did not get in uh, because I, at the same time, I was going through what every kid was going through back then, uh, which we don't have to get into. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, I did know some people who went there, you know, and uh, so it was, again, it was just, a, and, and the other thing was shooting, you know, every two, the first two weeks of every season we shot in New York, right? We shoot mm-hmm. okay. We mm-hmm. write these musical numbers for the first like eight episodes, mm-hmm. right? Then be put into the first eight episodes, but we shoot them all in the first two weeks of the show. Oh wow! So so in in the city mm-hmm. in Manhattan, and I have to tell you, there's still nothing I've been through, and I've been through a lot of cool things. Nothing was as cool as that first time I'm sitting just outside of Central Park. You know, and 59th Street. Oh, yeah. In, in, a, in a director's chair, you know, <laughs> all the other producer, director, whatever, sitting in the director's chairs with this huge musical number. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, man. And it's like, someone freaking pinch me, man. This is like, <laughs> you know, and I invited every one of my Bronx boys to come and watch. That's what's up. <laughs> one of them came. Of course you know, did. Sons of they not <laughs> they were too cool, you know. They yeah. had you know, it was like, what the hell? When I when I left for California, you know, they I'm sure they all uh, they all said, you know, well, don't worry if it doesn't work out, you can all <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I was thinking, obviously. <laughs> but uh, I still talk to them to the ones who are still alive mm-hmm. um, <laughs> at. Uh, I still tell him, I still give him hell for not coming to, uh, to visit when, uh, I was in town shooting. That is so cool. It is. And we thank you for sharing that little personal <laughs> tidbit with us. <laughs> wow. This is, we aim to create a safe space, you know? There you go. <laughs> so I, I thought I heard some, I thought I heard somewhere, or are you doing talking somewhere, and you were saying that there there's something that you brought from fame and put into Deep Space Nine. Was oh yeah, a- yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that, it was a whole episode I brought from. <laughs> I had just I a had, little something. I had written an episode called uh, "The Old Ball Game" on Fame, which was about the Fame kids playing this team. Oh, um, uh in a baseball game and it was it was a fun script and the episode came out rob morrow who was on uh northern exposure was mm-hmm. one of the first mm-hmm. episodes he came he was the he was the the captain of the other team the asshole on the other team <laughs> and he was good um but uh you know it was a little difficult let's be honest to uh to do a baseball game with a lot of dancers who did not look fantastic playing the outfield. <laughs> never, never had a glove on in their lives. <laughs> and they know what a glove was, probably. And uh, the other thing was, the one thing, and this was in the first season I did, so I was just, you know, I was, I was uh, a lowly, whatever I was, script consultant, so I didn't even get to go I, I think maybe once i went down to the set where they were filming i mean the location where they were filming the, the baseball team and all i said to the executive producer was it's supposed to be like queens were shooting this in i think that's where the field was supposed to be just tell the dp not to shoot the palm trees okay <laughs> <laughs> the only thing we have to watch out for so palm trees. Shoot mm-hmm. palm trees. And if you watch the episode, palm which trees. you can find or not, they're the goddamn palm trees. <laughs> so, there okay, are no palm trees this. and flushing. I have, to do this, I have to do this episode again without the palm trees. <laughs> uh, but I didn't want to write it. Uh, you know, that that felt too much like, you know, 
ripping myself off. <laughs> so I felt I, I should not be the one writing it. Uh, so I, I, I gave it to Ron, Ron Moore, to write it. Um, of course, he was becoming a big baseball fan at that time. Um, and some of the same gags, I got to tell you. Some <laughs> of the same gags. Not knowing who to tag, because they all look alike. <laughs> that's such a good one. That's so great. And, and that, that's based on something that actually happened in the minor leagues that I read about. That, oh, that, wow. You know, the teams changed so much in the minors at times that the catcher just hadn't been paying attention. And, he, you know, <laughs> they said he didn't touch home plate. Tag him, tag him, tag him. And he ran to the dugout and he looked at all these faces and he didn't know who they <laughs> And he just went down the whole line tagging people and looking at the Oh, my people. gosh. So I, that was that was, uh, but that was a that was a fun show, and Avery was so into it. And when <laughs> Avery was into things, you knew everything was going to be good because oh, yeah, yeah. number one on the call sheet, and you want him to be happy. Mm-hmm. And, and, and Ciroc was into it, and of course. Uh, and uh, you know uh, Max could actually play some ball, mm-hmm. and so he had a he had a pretend he was a lefty or something. I forget. <laughs> they had to give him a glove so that he would look more awkward. awkward. Uh-huh. It was too difficult for him uh, <laughs> to do it, uh, it with his natural uh, throwing hand um, and batting uh, stance. Oh, so, wrong. I mean, that was fun. But yes, yeah, so fame did have uh, uh, yes, fame did wind up uh, on Deep Space Nine. <laughs> oh, and I what an that. episode yeah it's a lot of fun what an episode that's it- the opposition <laughs> <laughs> that is my first cosplay outfit I definitely have a, a complete Niners oh, yes. baseball Niners. <laughs> hey man nothing makes me happier than the couple of times I don't do it often but if I go to a convention and I see people in in niner uniforms I, I have to tell you it's because i know you know people keep saying and i'm not saying it's not true that they watch the show from the beginning and they were fans from the beginning but the the truth is it was lonely out there mm-hmm. well, we know mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yep. we were not beloved by anyone <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And of course, you know, people would tell us like, oh, of course you like Deep Space Nine. It's got the black guy in it. And I'm like, it has nothing to do. Okay, it has a little bit to do with that. <laughs> it, uh, it has a little bit to do. But the, the fact of the hard. matter was that I would I can't stand behind if the show was shit. That's that's it. I wasn't gonna be able to stand behind. And it wasn't yeah. shit. It was beautiful. It was amazing. It was something, it was wow. unlike anything else we'd ever seen. And with like it was our shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right from exactly. the emissary, we were like, from okay, the, okay, the okay. Pilot, okay, it's still the best pilot. It's still Michael, the best pilot, without a doubt. When when Michael died, and mm-hmm. I was, I was mm-hmm. close to Michael, I still miss Michael. I mean, yeah. very different people on, in a lot of ways, but Michael and I really got along, and and and. I, I like Michael a lot. So when Michael passed away in 2005, I hadn't seen an episode since we'd gone off the air. And I watched the pilot, and uh, I was I was really impressed by by seeing that pilot again mm. because so much of what we did later on, long after Michael was was gone from the show. Um, so much of it. It was all there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there were times, you know, there was frustration because it was like, don't you guys know what you created? Why are you giving me a hard time? <laughs> you know, we're just, I'm just following the path you laid out. That's mm-hmm. what I wanted to do was take what what the emissary promised on all levels, the father son relationship, all the character, all the stuff that's in there, and just take it to the limit. That mm-hmm. was all I felt my job was. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, anytime people were trying to get in the way of that, you know, it just became a thing. Mm-hmm. You know, not that I like having to go through things, 
but I'm willing to go through things. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so anyway, but the the fact is that uh, you know it was probably maybe better for for us for the show actually that we were so deep, deep, deep undercover at times. It felt mm-hmm. like. You know, <laughs> Um, I think it probably was was better for the show and what, you know, was problematic in 1997 seems like business as usual in 2023 for television. Mm-hmm. And that's, mm-hmm. One agree. word for that arc, storyline arcs. Mm-hmm. Today, you know, with the streaming and everything, it fits perfectly with what's going on. In 2023, mm-hmm. I I must say, and, and I say this, uh, you know, I put this into Deep Space Nine, and I'm a huge Trekkie. Deep Space Nine has stood the test of time. And it has also proven to be the best written, directed, character um, um, development. Um, development. Thank you. Thank you. I'm getting, I'm getting kind of, you know, and, <laughs> you know, it's just, it, and it, and it's, it's wonderful to see how that went through the seven years, that the seven seasons that you all were on right now, you look at it now and it's like, and it, and it has stood the test of time. Well, unlike we, some we, other. Well, we, we just watched it. 10, 10 episodes of Picard. We just I know, watched DS9. I know, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, I'm, DS9 is on, I'm going to watch it or I'm going to put it on my TV. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, it's just, it was just a great show and characters, you know, the chemistry, it was really, it was just, it was just all there to see and feel. So thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> But like so, she said, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. So go like, ahead. like Fran was saying, um, I think me and Sabrina have had this conversation. Um, we just watched Picard, which was really good. But my problem was that it got to use the beautiful background and story development of DS9 without mm-hmm. the characters of DS9. And it really goes back to the same thing. And I was there when DS9 came on. DS9 was, I was always watching Trek. It was always somebody else's Trek. Then I was just kind of watching. But DS9 was my Trek. I loved it. I was in the military during the time um, DS9 came on. So I would see it. I wouldn't see it all the way through, but I would see it like when I would come home or if I was on a base somewhere overseas um, during the summer. But it was my Trek. I, 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 I got married during that time. I had a family. So everything that was going on was, you know, I actually saw, you know, it happening um, in my trek. Um, and I, as, a, as a, I, it is, I, I just, it's everything to me. Um, and then when I watched this season, I'm probably ranting again and I apologize. <laughs> but I just wanted to tell you that I, I thought of you and Michael and all the other writers because the backdrop of that season, which was so good, was of DS9. the card. Of mm-hmm. the card was yeah. DS Nine, and I, I want everyone to please realize that you know you you are looking you are you, the benefit that they got was from all the work, all the love, sweat, and tears of those writers um, that people just didn't pay attention to when it was coming on. And, you know, like you know, everybody likes it now. Well, they're finding out about it, and that's a good thing. And that's a good thing. Hopefully it will bring more people uh, to find out about DS9. But I, I wanted to bring that up and let you know that we do see that. And um, your work, that's how good it is. <laughs> They're still using it, you know. Yeah, well, that that's uh, nice. You know, my take is, is always, uh, I remember when... Uh, when John Lennon was killed and uh, I I was being visited by a a friend from England like a month or two later, whatever. And she was staying with me and um, 
you know, at some point we started to talk about Lenin. And I went through the typical thing of, oh, isn't it a shame, you know, that the Beatles didn't get a chance to get back together and make more albums? And, and she goes, man, that's such an American kind of attitude, you know? It's like you always want more. <laughs> Just be happy with all the stuff, you know, the stuff that the Beatles did, the stuff he did alone, you know? It's like, yeah, it's terrible that he he, he was, you know, murdered, obviously. Terrible, horrible at 40 years old. She wasn't making light of it. But to be all bent out of shape about, if only there was more, if only, you know, it's like, that's why I keep telling people all the time, you know, there's 170 odd episodes of Deep Space Nine. Stop asking, is there going to be another Deep Space Nine? Is there going to be more Deep Space Nine? It's like, it's like, guys, that's Deep Space Nine. You know, <laughs> Renee is gone. You know, yeah. Avery, I don't know what's going on with Avery. I don't know, you know, whether he wants to or is capable of whatever. I mean, it's just, it, it would never be the same show. Do we really want to see a re reboot DS9 with all new actors playing those characters? No. 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 Right. You know? <laughs> So, so, so Odo is off the table. Uh, granted to Salome Jens, I saw her in a play last year. Salome, you know, is, is not going to be doing the, the, you know, the changeling, the female. I, I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, just be happy with, with what we have. That's, that's yes. <laughs> yes. I get that. And at the same time, it was so good that I yearned for more. I can't stop myself, you know, because um, because we love the world, the world that you all created. We love those characters so much. It's hard to just let them go. But that's why I just watch it all over again all the time. It's crazy. You know? <laughs> DS9 is on in my house all the time. Well, look, I love hearing that. I mean, obviously, that's a nice thing to hear. I'm not going to try to talk you out of it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, obviously, that's that's lovely to hear. And I thank you uh, from the bottom of the place where my heart would be if I had one. But <laughs> you know, that, that's all good. But we did the best we could. I mean, certainly I did the best I could to end that show, to stick a fork in that show. You know, because we knew we weren't going to do a movie. So, you know, we try to split as many people up as we could, you know, give them someplace else to go and someplace else to do, um, uh, you know, as, as we were planning at the time. We would never have been able to come up with another, uh, you know, set of antagonists like the Dominion. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Dominion. So if there had been an eighth season, you know, as I kept telling the writers, the only place to go really was Earth. And that's mm -hmm. when we got into our version of Section 31, mm -hmm. at which the fans would have despised. Back then, because oh, yeah. how could that be evil at the heart of the... Uh, but but once you've conquered all the villains, the only villain left is yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so um, so it would have just been something else for people to be disappointed in. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I used to tell people that the difference between Outlander fans and Deep Space Nine fans is the Outlander fans want to bake you cookies, <laughs> and knit you sweaters, and <laughs> Deep Space Nine fans want to tell you how much they love the show, but what you did wrong and what you could have done. And don't you realize that Ducat is really a nice guy? <laughs> you know? That's just, that's just that's just He didn't have to be hanging out with Kira's mother, though. That was wrong. <laughs> that show that was wrong. That was his... Well, so, better her mother than her, so, you know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, did you see um, any similarities? You might not, but, I mean, between the oh, no. uh, the critiques of um, 
that DS9 got in the beginning and the scene and the type of criticism that uh, disco and uh, newer checks, because I do. Well, yeah, obviously. I mean, <laughs> and, and that's why be careful what you wish for, because it's like um, there is something about this franchise and maybe all franchises now. I mean, social media, man, it just, mm. it, it, it's, Exhausting. It's antisocial. You know, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So true. Well put. That's what it is. Um, so yes, I, 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 I thought it was quite amusing that here you go. You know, there's been a a chunk of time where there was no more new track on TV, and here comes some new track. So <laughs> hate it. You know, watch. <laughs> And that's the other thing. People, the other thing with Trek that drives me crazy, maybe again, this is true of, of you know, Marvel, and uh, I, but I don't know. It seems to be really attracting that people who can only criticize it, but they can't stop watching. If I don't, <laughs> yes. I don't want York people. That's you, a channel. That's a you thing. This isn't forever. We're, right. we're, you know, you're not going to be here. You're going to be, you know, a cold, you know, marble corpse. Um, so don't waste time with things you don't like. Yes. You know, True. don't, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's. And let me like it. Just let me it's, like it. It's okay. <laughs> you know, you always have to try to convince you of why you should not like it. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's just the thing. Yeah, I feel like there's... Now they're not saying it's, you know, at least the only thing Discovery did not get was it was really stolen from Babylon 5. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, yeah. oh, God, all the time with that. Still. Yes, yeah, still. <laughs> still. Still. Babylon 5 will never go away. And now, all of a sudden, it's all about politics. Mm -hmm. and, and is Star Trek woke? And was Star Trek political in the past? Oh, and come on. Things that, that just seem like so unnecessary to be arguing about. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Really, really, um, which is, you know, one of the reasons why I, uh, I don't watch Star Trek. <laughs> uh, there you go. It's just, too I mean, much. it's, it's one of the reasons why, like, we decided that why the Sci Fi Sisters formed. You know, we got tired of arguing with people. I don't need to argue with you. Mm -hmm. I just need to exist over here and do my thing and love what I love and talk about it the way I want to talk about it. You know? Very cool. Yeah. You know, what I like about it personally, and I was just saying this online today, picketing um, to, to uh, an actor. Uh, who was picketing along with us is that, you know, back in 1990, whatever it was, we were told flat out, even though, you know, uh, we had Avery and we had Ciroc and we had Penny and Brock Peters. I mean, that's <laughs> not, they weren't, they weren't saying that that was bad or they were trying to stop that. I'm not, that's not what I'm going to say, but they were saying, you know, the thing you have to understand is, Black people don't watch science fiction, and Star Trek has no black fans. Ooh. We were a constant. Wow! Oh my gosh! How <laughs> in the world? I think you know, we've always gotten that though. Yeah, I mean, because that's why we started this. I mean, you go into these spaces, um, and they're like, "You don't." I friend even mentioned it. You don't look like a Star Trek fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to get that all the time. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't know what you. At my house, I look like a Star Trek fan. Bim -bim. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Or, assume, or assume you're like a pseudo fan and you don't really yeah. know, you don't your know stuff. what you're stuck. You don't, know what you're stuck. <laughs> you don't <laughs> start with us. Don't start. Please. <laughs> Which is also a, a, a thing that I can't stand is like you have to prove yourself that you're a fan. No, I just like it. I like it. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have to memorize every line. I don't have to know the title of every episode. I don't have, have to know, to know every guest, as guest star and well, you could. You know, who, who <laughs> is the <laughs> No, it's not a wrong that. You know, I, I could, but I don't have it. to. And that's the thing. Like there seems there's a one upmanship. Like I'm more trekker than thou. You know, like I, and you know, I, like I don't. I don't even. That's why I got my sisters over here because. They will run any damn trivia contest. And I'm just like, I'm out. I don't know. Don't ask me specifics. I, know, I remember, I just... like, start talking to me about the storyline and the plot. And I could tell you what happened. And, we, you know, I don't remember the dude's name. <laughs> I remember the chick had some late crazy hair and Always. she was blue or some shit, you know, like. I got you. You know, but it doesn't mean that, like, <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a fan. But that that thing about, you know, when I tell people that I'm a Trekkie and I'm proud of it and all this stuff. And it was like, you know, this, this, that stock, well, you don't look like a Trekkie fan. And I, and then when I tell them how I became a Trekkie fan, being 11, I'm an OG, um, being an 11 year old girl, seeing you hero up on the screen for the first time. And that opened up my world. And then, and then they get this look on their face that says, Oh yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Why wouldn't you be a fan? You know, so I, I, I you know, I, but I like, I like, even as an 11 year old girl, I like Twilight Zone. I like mm-hmm. the time tunnel. I like Boys to the Bottom of the Sea. You know, yeah, the time tunnel. Boys time tunnel. Jimmy Darren, show. Jimmy Darren, you know, I like. I had lunch with Jimmy. Did you? Oh. <laughs> no. I hadn't seen Jimmy in a while, I have to say, because we used to, you know, we were. We are close, mm-hmm. uh, but since the pandemic, everything's yeah. got screwed up. Yeah. Um, so we had not, we talked on the phone and stuff or text, but to actually sit down for a couple of hours, it was, it was great. It was just so I'm sure. great to see him. Okay, um, as well. I was yeah, so excited yeah, yeah. when he came on. Yeah, he, uh. <laughs> He's still Jimmy. <laughs> Moon doggy. Moon doggy. Moon doggy. <laughs> Your lips are still. <laughs> I was on that cruise when he was on that cruise. And I'm telling you, it was hilarious because he did his regular Vegas show in the evening. And there was a set of women of a certain age that just went ballistic crazy. When Sabrina, are you saying Gidget. that your panties were up on the stage? Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, he went into Gidget and we went crazy. <laughs> we, uh, this is going back a couple of years, telling stories out of school. But, uh, Jimmy, myself, my wife, and Evie, his wife, went out to, to dinner Um at, at this Italian restaurant on Melrose Avenue. Anyway, so we had dinner and we had parked around the corner in this little, you know, uh, parking lot. So we're walking out. And as we're walking, there are three, very, three or maybe four. I don't know the exact number. I don't remember. Uh, Latina women. Okay. Very attractive. And I guess they were also either waiting for their car or something. And so I'm walking. My wife's walking. Evie's walking. We get to where we have to go. We turn around. No Jimmy. (laughs) (laughs) Jimmy is standing there being Jimmy Darren with these three women. And they are laughing and giggling. I don't think they knew who he was. I don't know. Didn't matter. (laughs) Evie's standing there going, this has been my life for a while. Sixty years. There's just no sixty years of this. Look at him. Look at him. Look at the smile on his. Face. It's, like, it's like I want to say, Jimmy. Come on, come on. Time to go. Let's go. He can't help himself. He no. can't. He is so charming. He just turns it on, and everybody just loves him. It was. Just, it was just. It's, it's, you can't it's, it's, listen. Oh. I I've watched everything he's ever been in. I can't. Let me just stop with Moon the heart doggy. flutters. <laughs> Sabrina's all you all flush over there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Moon my, my son okay. became a big time tunnel fan when he was little, you mm-hmm. know. Um and and uh it was it was just great, you know, buying the DVDs of the time tunnel and watching the time tunnel again, you know, that brought me back to 
to being a little kid. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> and they had a woman scientist on there. They did. You didn't I, see that much on TV in the sixties. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. You know, sure. was that the, so, she was a former Miss America. Ooh, oh, I forget her name. Lee yeah. Merriweather. Lee Merriweather. Lee Merriweather. Lee Merriweather. Yeah. Right, Come on right, now. Come on right. now. Get it. And sparks would go off, and Lee was on the yeah. dials, man. Yeah. And she couldn't get him back. <laughs> and, and they they remain close. I mean, I I'm not saying any of you because it's you know she she's a very beautiful woman and Jimmy. Because again, this is even more years ago. They, I, I was asked to speak to uh, speak at an event that Jimmy was being honored, and they actually asked me to be one of the speakers. So I spoke, and one of the other speakers, I couldn't believe it was Lee Merriweather. Oh, oh wow! Like thirty years after the time tunnel, at least sixty, seventy, eighty, nine. No, forty years. After. Wow. Mm-hmm. And 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 he's still that tight with Lee Merriweather. It was just you know that's just Jimmy. Jimmy. Right, Jimmy. and it was a one season show. I mean, it wasn't even yeah. like they did seven seasons seven of anything. Of you know? Three. It's it's he he he's a he's a he's a lovely guy. He's a. Great guy. <laughs> I wrote a fan letter for that show. I wrote one. Oh yeah, okay. I did. That's I'm great. A fan. <laughs> cool. I was a fan letter writer when I was. I mean, that's what you did back then when you were a kid. It was nothing is, else. Cool. You wrote fan letters. <laughs> if anybody did it, it was Sabrina. I, I did it for Star Trek. I did it for Time Tunnel, and they did it. Actually, I did a, a more recent one for um, what was the show that? Uh, never mind. But uh, it, you, know, you sent an email. Now it's like, oh, it's an email. Yeah, no, it's not it's the like, same. Come on, it's not it's the not. same. It's not. It's not. Not at all. <laughs> no, it's not the same as getting like bucket loads of of mail. Like we doing, you know, a, a paper just. You know the the physical volume, mm -hmm. the the yeah, physical the impression. The opening of a letter is yeah. just so much cooler than clicking on a text or. A, mm -hmm. or it is. It's just, it's really a treasure. You really, you know, I, took the time. Yeah, it takes yeah. Time yeah. To do. yeah, yeah. I mean, I would, you know, part of developing as a writer. I had a friend of mine who went to Guadalajara for medical school. <laughs> he became a doctor. Um, and a lot of kids went down to Guadalajara mm -hmm. uh, to medical school, which I visited once, which was, wow. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my doctor, that's, I've never seen people party hardier in my life. <laughs> medical students in Guadalajara. And we're laughing about it now, but at the time it was like, these people are going to, <laughs> I mean, I would, anyway, anyway so i used to write these incredible him and his wife because he had gotten married and she was down there with him at times too uh i would write these long letters these crazy funny letters to keep him amused you know to keep him you know and a lot uh, and and that became a thing you know because they would read the letters to their friends down in guadalajara so I had a little audience, you know, so I would, I, I, I developed, um, through letter writing, you know, mm -hmm. and we don't do that anymore. It's like four lines. It's yeah. like, you don't do, you know, I had letters that had a beginning, middle and end as they say. Nope. <laughs> I don't even think people have the patience to write that much, even if they put it in an email form. Yeah, I know. It's uh, Hey, listen, yeah. my father wooed my mother and got her to come to this country <laughs> with his letter writing. I was like, hey, that's that beautiful. must have been some kind of letter writing, Dad. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because she was in India, right? Right. He wrote to her for four years after the war, and she came over in 49. She didn't come over with him in 45. She, he was writing for four years. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. <laughs> sure did. And I was always jealous that he never wrote a letter to me. I never had a letter from him, like when I went to camp or college or anything, because he was all spent out. He, was like, <laughs> he, was all, he wrote all the letters. He, he was wrote all the letters. Like, I got okay, what I I'm need. I'm not, <laughs> I know you're coming home. Right. <laughs> I don't know, um, Ira, if you remember this. On the cruise, there was a lady that you was doing a little panel, and there was a lady who came up and sat in the front and and asked you, do you ever hear from Avery? And you answered the question, and, you know, that was me. That was me. I was uh -huh. the one that, that asked you that question, and you, and, you know, you told, you know, that you 
You did you did name someone and I, and I'm sorry to name such me that sometimes he will be in contact with. Yeah, with Dave Zappone who did Right, the, right, the, right. Yeah. You did mention yeah. that. And um I was, you know, a bit taken back cuz I don't know in my head I just thought you know, you all were all I I just thought you all were all in not all, but that there was some kind of contact with him. You know. Well, I, I I tell you, you know, for a while there there was, you know, and uh, as I think I said, you know, I, I when I saw him at that Vegas convention and, you know, we hadn't seen each other in 13 years, it was quite the reunion, you know, and it was fantastic. Yeah. And, and just hanging with, you know, it was exactly what I wanted it to be. But, mm-hmm. but you know, Avery... As I said, Avery is the most vulnerable person I ever met. And I remember you saying that he mm-hmm. he would he would he would deny it up and down and say I don't know what I'm talking about, but I do know what I'm talking about. And I, you know, he, uh, he he's he's wounded, you know, in a lot of ways. You know, he's a sensitive guy, and and uh, I know that what's been going on in the country has been uh, tough because when we were still in touch, I knew how much it was killing him. Um, the way the country was shifting. Mm. Um, so, but you know, I mean, once again, the way I look at it is I, I had my time with Avery, uh, you know, it was an exciting You know, uh, it was just an exciting relationship. It was a guy, you know, who who I found endlessly fascinating, endlessly exasperating at times, (laughs) and and would blow my mind. I mean, that's the thing. Avery remembered everything, which is very painful. I'm sure (laughs) a lot of ways, but he would remember everything he would call back stuff conversations we had about the show or about whatever and he would like call me on and go but you said back then and you know um but he uh whatever he he's been through um i just i just think it's had its impact on him in mm-hmm. in in a lot of ways, and you know, you'd see it sometimes. You'd see it on the show uh, at times, but uh, I just think time and and the state of the state uh, has. But yet, he calls a pawn and just shoots the shit with the pawn <laughs> at times. And and but man, we try to get him in that documentary. Holy. Oh. Mm-hmm. I knew about that. Everything, everything we could come up with, just the voice, anything he wanted, you know. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, we'd do the dance with him and he'd say yes, maybe, then no. Um but but I would never I mean the I mean personally, besides the writing staff who I literally lived with not all of them at the same time, people mm-hmm. came and went. But with the exception of the writing staff, you know, the 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 person who, when I think of Deep Space Nine, who I think of um, mostly is is Avery because he was such an enigma at times. Um, and uh, but when he directed, th- th- that was the best because he mm. called at night we'd have conversations it was oh. like he was so happy i mean I, I wouldn't say he was so happy but i mean he liked being that involved he liked mm-hmm. the direction and he liked it being collaborative and he liked explaining what he was going to do the next day and how that day shooting had gone and it was just a whole different thing than when he was just acting wow. you know i used to tell my friends uh, also you know my real life friends that didn't look at track back then. I said, you do know that there's a show where there's a, a really loving and supportive single father. Mm-hmm. And the guy's black and 
you know, I say it's really loving. I say the child isn't precocious. The dad isn't a buffoon. You know, it's not, mm-hmm. you know, but not say that y'all know what I'm trying to say. Right. It was mm-hmm. really heart wrenching. And, you know, I said it's a whole family and, you know, and then I'm like, well, what show is that? I'm like, Deep Space Nine. And they be like, oh, Star Trek. I'm like, yes. It's not just about monsters and spaceships, it's about relationships on this show. And if you want to see a great show with a great positive, role model for a black man being a father you would check it out mm-hmm. of course since it was star trek they poo-pooed me off and i'm like yeah. well you're missing it so <laughs> i also think you know one of the things i uh, you know looking back i'm i'm so pleased with and uh, i'm very happy we did it is you know uh I just thought Cassidy Yates mm. was yes. such, I mean, for someone who never got her own episode, basically mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. was such talk about a role model, mm-hmm. just as a human being, forget right woman mm-hmm. black. I mean, she was, she was as contemporary a character yes. as you mm-hmm. could find in Star Trek. You know, she, she was strong without being a bitch, you know, right. yeah. she could handle herself. She was loving without being weak, you know, mm-hmm. um, yep. she could hold her own with Avery. She was great mm-hmm. with Ciroc. Yep. And you just knew, as, I, as I've, I've said to some, I, I said to Nana, a visitor recently, you know, Cassidy Yates is one of those characters that, you know, she has a life. Even when she's not on screen, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. And she yeah. is off doing shit mm-hmm. when we're not watching her, right? right. Mm-hmm. And that's and right. that's when you know that that's a good character who you can imagine being off, being a a, a captain, a freighter captain, doing her thing, doing dealing with whatever she's dealing with, and and missing Ben right. when mm-hmm. she's there. Um, so I I thought you know that was. Um, a really, you know, it's like I, the the two the two women I always compare is the success of Cassidy Yates and the failure of Keiko O'Brien. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ever, ever, ever were able to to mm-hmm. to handle that uh, character and give that character like an expanded life beyond being. Being O'Brien's uh, wife, wow. and yeah, you know, and and on the show, his wife was really Bashir. So right. it, exactly, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So now I love the fact. It's amazing what uh, what thirty years will do because now it's all about Bashir and Garrick. Yeah. Yes. I know. <laughs> yes. Guys, I hate to tell you this. <laughs> they were together for a handful of shows. Right. They got the team of Garrick and Bashir as they like to paint it now. It was Bashir and O'Brien. Thank you. Constantly. Mm-hmm. And that had suddenly been swept under the rug. Remember mm-hmm. the Alamo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Battle of Britain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crossing the pond. That's it. <laughs> um, Let's have a paint and sing our songs. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, oh, that, man. That's, that's bugged me. That, that, that has bugged me a lot. And even when we were doing the doc, I really couldn't get those guys. I, I know it pissed them off while we were doing the show. They were not thrilled that, um, most of the time they were joined at the hip and, and, or at least they perceived it that they each had shows where, you know, other things were happening, but in their minds, you know, and, and I know Colm never understood, not that he never understood, but the whole going into the hollow suite and doing the stuff with the, you know, thought it was juvenile. Um, but you know, that's what, guys do when they're trying right. to right. <laughs> like you got a buddy that you go like play some shit you with do. especially especially <laughs> during wartime i mean yeah. you have yeah. to have your outlet you know i know that's why i said it it for people who 
may not have gone to um, war, you definitely did a good good job of uh, portraying people who have to find their outlet and the PTSD. And I, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it definitely did a lot for me because I, you know, you you do do juvenile stuff when you because you, you play hard, you work hard, so you play hard. And um, I, I I I thought it was you know we we did stupid stuff because. Tomorrow might be the the last day, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. So you do stupid stuff, you know. I made my work. sister look at that scene where Avery had poured his heart out to her about the base. Take me out to the hall suite, and why yeah. he wanted you know, whatever. He said, "You got to promise. You have to promise that you're not going to uh, say this to anybody." Oh, I won't. And the next scene. <laughs> She immediately was running her mouth. My sister said, oh, she just, she just died. Let me not say you have to look at this episode with me. This is something else because my sister's not a tracker, but she'll tolerate it with me. And, you know, it's like when she went to it, that was the funniest. That was the funniest thing that Cassidy, I think, uh, did. And, yeah. You know, that was so funny. Oh, my, Maybe my promise favorite. not to tell you. No, you she, my favorite was that when he needed somebody to fix that team, he had to go get Cassidy. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> was, mm-hmm. who are you gonna get uh what you call my girlfriend <laughs> so so I, let me ask you this like was there anything that like did you have hanging chads did you do you feel like you left anything out there that you really wanted some resolution for for ds9 well um resolution well you know i mean there is there's a part of me that even though the fans would have hated it beyond even <laughs> you know there's a part of me that that said the the you know at the time look at the time i was reacting to what was going on around me and and you know i wanted i you know Everyone makes the captain a god. They treat him like God. Shatner, Picard, you know, Kate, you know, they worship, the fans worship these captains. And I said, screw that. We're going to make Cisco a god. You know? <laughs> we're going to make him we're a gonna god. Make him an actual god. We're make him an actual god. <laughs> yeah. It comes all the way back from Emissary. And now we're going to finish that. Now, the fact is, yes. He was a, a a black dad with a son, and him leaving that kid was more problematic. I got caught up in the Star Trek of it all, mm-hmm. you know? and as and I see where that you know was a problem. Even though we said he said he'd come back, you know that's what Avery wanted. It was a two line change or something, so we made that change. But there's part of me would, that would love to have ended the show with him. Uh, Resigning from Starfleet mm-hmm. and moving down to Bajor. Oh yeah, that was with, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. And, can see that. And and literally have them not the final shot be the space station, which is fantastic and it's a beautiful image, and and that mm-hmm. station receding into the distance can still you know uh, tickle the uh, the old heartstrings. But there was something I would love to say. You know what? Forget about Bejo coming into the Federation. I'm gonna. I still have a lot to learn from Bejo, and this is where I belong, and this is where my life is, and that would have been nice. Um, but no, you know, I, it's not that they were hanging chats. There are things that I wish we had more time. You know, we were juggling so many. There were times we were juggling so many balls in the air. It had. Mm-hmm. Stories and so many characters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, we, and also, I would like to have done more with the Maquis, but because of Voyager, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, it was like they weren't. You know, it was like we can, but we can't. And and Eddington was an interesting character in the Maquis oh, yeah. uh, people, but it, it, that was one of the few times where I said, no, 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 we're killing Eddington. We're going to end that story. We have to end something. We have too many. We're going to getting into mm. the Dominion War. We can't have the talk about a hanging chat of the of the Maquis. But it was it was how to how to get rid of that. Though there's part of me that wished I could have done more with that. 
I wish we could come up with Section 31 a little earlier. Yeah. How that would have, uh, uh, you know, been met if we had. I don't think there there would have been a lot of stress if we really tried to. uh, But the fact is, we... I came up with it when I came up with it and, and, um, you know, we were running out of time. So we definitely didn't have enough time to, to play with that. Uh, so section 31, I would think was, a a bit of a hanging chad, but you know, like I said, seven years, a hundred every episode, I was the only writer who was there the whole time. Hmm. And, and, it's I really don't want to waste time. And believe me, I've beaten myself up over the years. <laughs> Many an episode. Uh but so what? You gotta take the the, the bad with the good. Mm-hmm. Uh you know, we had twenty six episodes to fill a season and you do what you know, it's a it's a speeding it's a speeding rocket and you're just trying to hold on. Uh, but but when I think of Deep Space Nine now and that's after not thinking about it all for like the first thirteen years. Wow, uh, you know, I mean, not think. It was, I mean, I still were friends with a lot of people who were on the show, so it's not like the show was out of my life. But I wasn't thinking about. I wasn't doing interviews or thinking about it to mm-hmm. so the bigger picture. But you know, as I've told the actors while we were, you know, doing these documentaries, the the documentary it was like. The simple truth of it all is that it took seven years. We were there for seven years. And looking back on it, it was by any stretch of the imagination, a positive experience, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, overall. And it's okay to say, hey, you know what? It doesn't suck. You know, <laughs> at all. Right. not at all. No. And, 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 and to have something like that in your life. I mean, every time I go out, you know, this last week and a, whatever it's been of going out and, and ticketing and, you know, people come up and go, you know, give me a chance to geek out or I'm, you know, I love the show, <laughs> you know. I, I wish some people would come out and say they love the 4400, which is a show I'm very proud of. That yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That is way, way, way underrated. Yeah. Uh, true much that. more interesting. I understand it didn't have all the bells and whistles, but I like that show a lot. And, uh, you know, I like to see that get a little bit more love, maybe. But, but, but Deep Space Nine, I mean, Jesus Christ, it's been 30 years and, and, you know, Avery did call me up that time. That was the amazing thing. What, whether it was two, 2012 or 2013 or whatever the freaking year it was, he called me up and was so, for Avery, he was pretty damn excited. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen these new fans? These young people? These young people who were, were too young to even watch it when it was on? They understand it. They get it. <laughs> they, they love it. And it was like, wow, Avery, I'm glad it's making you happy. <laughs> <laughs> Who would not, you know, would not get into those discussions at all at the time. You know, you know, to put that, you know, he used to say to me, put the uniform on and see how heavy it is to mm. wear, mm. you know. Put the uniform on for twelve hours and tell me if you're happy. You know? <laughs> uh, and I get it, but yeah, but I, I have to say, you know, he 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 responded to the to that new wave of people who were not completely, you know, that's what I drives me crazy about Star Trek. You can't just be. How is this show in comparison to other things you watch in your life? It always has to be. How is it compared to TNG? How is it compared to the right? Right. How is it compared to the Voyager. How is Voyager compared to Enterprise? How is it compared to Disco. How is Disco? You know, it's like it's like just it, watch the show. You know, so, so, 
it's great to have fans or, or 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 to be meeting fans who did not seem to care about that anymore. The other mm. thing say that from the very beginning, I will say this: when I used to go to the conventions in Pasadena, which was the big convention back in the day in the '90s, that was the one convention I'd go to. From the very beginning, I was shocked how much people in the military responded to the show, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, we used to get letters from, uh, at the time it was Lebanon was the big thing, right? Mm-hmm. That was the big, you know, flashpoint in the Middle East and, 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 and we Bosnia. Would, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we would hear from soldiers. Uh, we get letters and certainly at conventions, I'd meet people and they would talk about, you know, the thing that I loved back then was you know how how much they responded to Cisco as a as a commanding officer as someone who they felt yeah. yes would have their backs and they could trust that was fantastic and I'm talking in the day yeah. not thirty years later mm-hmm. that was cool um, and also just the fact that the show uh, performed a real purpose for them it gave them off time, you know, time to enjoy themselves yes. and get away from it. And that my wife used to freak out when she'd come to these conventions because a lot of times, sometimes people, as we know, they don't want to talk to you or they feel they don't want to, but they talk to her a lot, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like adjacent, you know, they can talk right. to adjacent through. And, and, you know, she would get all emotional. Uh, because there'd also be, you know, uh, uh, women in the ranks uh, who would, who would, who would. It was just, it, it was a thing. So the military we had, you know, that's something that had never been written about. But I always felt we had uh, a true fan base. Oh yeah. In in the military, and that felt uh, really good, which is why. One of my things back in the day was, you know, I really started to get a little queasy about all these space battles and ships blowing up and people dying on those ships. But no one thinks about all the people who are dying. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, it's like really not good. You know, it's not good to uh, to, to to simplify something that's so horrible. So that's why I wanted to do as much, you know, actual combat violence. I didn't want the fans to like it, you know. That's why to the death I was so pissed off when when there was the big fight with the Jemadar, the hand to hand combat, and it was pretty brutal. And then mm-hmm. they got out of it. Then the, the uh, Rick cut like I don't know forty, fifty, sixty seconds out of it, which was all like the really you know, scenes of the, of the crew, like really like ugly killing. So mm-hmm. not kill mm-hmm. it was like, so, so, you know, battle of AR, or the siege of AR five, five, eight, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Or the stuff with obviously Nog and, mm-hmm. and the PTSD. I really started to feel a little queasy about, uh, how Star Trek portrays uh, combat and death in combat. It's like, mm-hmm. look, look at that ship blow up. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Go on it. Hey, they're just counting red shirts. You know, don't even give the guy a name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you, I, I swear, I, I'm loving, I'm just sitting here wrapped. Like, I, I am really, loving your brain and i'm really happy that we have time to sit here and listen to all of this because i mean i feel like i have all these questions i feel like i could keep you forever but i won't um (laughs) because i have a ton more questions i have a ton more questions um all right you know i mean because i i mean we've all sort of been well, okay. I, I can't even figure out where I want to go next because I kind of want to I have some DS9 questions, but I also really think it's important for us to talk about um, the strike yeah. and and what's going on with the strike, if you want to. Um, 
and why people are striking, because I think that there's outside of Hollywood um, and outside of people who write, I think the lay person doesn't understand what this strike is about. And, and I've seen, I've read enough of people breaking it down for me, like, because I didn't understand. I mean, I was just going to support the strike regardless, but I didn't understand what the specifics were about. Like, you know, and then people started breaking it down. Like these people are not making any money. Right. Like at all. I was making more money when I worked at Costco than these writers are making. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, you know, uh, I get it. Show business, just the word show business. People Mm -hmm. think it's one thing and, you know, that that once you're on a show um you know you have it made you know and it's all going to be beer and skittles and you're going to be living in a big old house you know is that um and uh it's never been like that for most writers and and now it's becoming impossible not only to make money but to learn the craft um writers have become more disposable than ever before Mm -hmm. Um, these many rooms that have popped up and have now become the norm of the business where you pay people scale for 10 weeks to create basically what a show is going to be take suck all the ideas and energy out of them and then you know if the show does go there's no guarantee they're going to even be on the show so um wow yeah. um so that's like horrific um you have shows the last show i was on and uh you know i'm i'm doing considerably better than than a, a lot of of obviously people starting out but i was on a show for 16 months 16 months and by the time my contract finally ran out um, it was eight episodes, by the way, 16 months, eight episodes. We hadn't filmed a single scene by oh, the time wow. we were done. We hadn't finished building the sets by the time we were done. So, and that's me who they kept on, but these writers come on these 10 week deal, 20 week deals. And by the time their contracts are up, you know, the the show isn't even in production. They don't know then they don't get taught how to be on a set. They never see a set. Mm. Then their 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 contract is up before the show goes before the cameras and uh That's great. So it, it's 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 I mean, you know, it's hard because you know, four hours of picketing you know, it's it, which I'm not complaining about. There's a lot worse things, but it's it's like four hours of picketing and talking to writers for four hours about <laughs> strike every day. It's like I have the strike coming out of my my ears. <laughs> Think, you know, the bottom line is, as with all strikes, you know, it's all about solidarity. It would be great if the other, you know, we're getting a lot of support, knock on wood, from the Teamsters. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, We'll see what happens with the actors, you know, um, when it's their time, because... Mm -hmm. They're coming up too, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's coming up. (laughs) The actors, the actors. um, But, you know, it's, it's... I have to say this, and I'm going to say it only because, I, again, I was talking about it today. The one thing that I have noticed about, and this is not my first, you know, barbecue, <laughs> but on at least four strikes in the past. So I've been through this before. But being, you know, and I've gone to Paramount, I've gone to Warner Brothers, I've gone to Universal, I've gone to CBS Radford. Today I was at Netflix, so I've been going to different places. And, you know, I have noticed on the picket lines, as opposed to other strike, how many women and how many people of color Mm -hmm. are members of this guild now. 
it has changed. Mm. They say things don't change. I'm telling you, it's changing and for the better. And let me tell you something. These people are not going, I believe, are not going to vote to take a shitty deal. Mm -hmm. They'll be willing to stay the course, which is what, and, you know, in 2007, it was a nightmare of, of, you know, uh, solidarity started to fray. Let's just put it that way. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. That's what we need. Mm-hmm. We need young blood who, who realize, they realize that they will never have the career they dreamed about. That's right. Mm-hmm. If they don't stand their ground right now. Mm-hmm. Because this isn't this is not something you know. Because I've heard a little bit of talk of well, do we really need to get this? Do we really need to get that? Yeah, we do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know what it's going to be, and I know that it's easy to talk. And when it gets to the dog days of summer, yeah, so much fun, right? Yep. Yep. You know, and the people aren't honking as much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Three months and look at those losers are still standing out there. Uh, and mm-hmm. with the mm-hmm. signs, it's suddenly it's not as much fun to yeah. watch. You know, it's like, it. I still think, I'm still hopeful that this is a uh, 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 young and, and, and hungry, which is important, hungry. <laughs> And, and dynamic uh, base for this guild. So that's what I have to say about the strike. Uh, just being on the picket line and looking at, at you know, from my dotage now, being the old, <laughs> and looking at these kids of, uh, I feel really uh, inspired by them and hopefully... We'll see. Yeah. Okay. That's all I got to say about the strike. So ask me a more fun question than okay, that. Okay, I got a, I got a more fun one for you. But thank you, for, thank you for like you know taking the time to talk about it because I think it's really important. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and I think a lot of our listeners are are really invested, you know, um, in supporting the writers yeah. too. So, okay, so here's one. I was listening to your, I watched the shuttle pod show that you were on. This uh, is definitely a much more fun question to my, to me and my, and you said TNG is the Connecticut of Star Trek. <laughs> and I lost my shit. I was on the floor. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> Can you tell people what you, you were talking about? Face, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Well, I, I hate to say this. But I was saying this back when I was on TNG. <laughs> okay. It's not a new thing by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, not it's Connecticut, though. It's, I want the carpet to prove it, but go ahead. <laughs> it's it's just, I mean, and I'm, you know. I ha- I have to admit I have not spent even when I lived back east I have not spent a lot of time in Connecticut. No, no. In the Bronx, we don't do that. Yeah, I have a good friend of mine, <laughs> you know, who who lives in Connecticut mm-hmm. now. Uh, so, but but look look at I mean it's 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 the enterprise. It's just very clean and mm-hmm. and. and and safe looking and it's very very white and when i say mm-hmm. that i don't mean that they're, they're not people you know of color you know walking we know what you talk about now yeah we know we, know. <laughs> <laughs> we get it we, we got it yeah no, got I mean, it. to me <laughs> to me that that it, it's just so obvious it's, mm-hmm. it's the it's the, and also at the time at the time, which we, I really don't want to, the one thing I, um, um, 
I'm getting a little, uh, you know, over is talking about Gene and working with Gene and disagreements with Gene and my brief one season with, with uh, on TMG. Um, I mean, that I've made that case over and over again. <laughs> but I guess the way the stories were told, what you could do and what you could not do, mm-hmm. the way the show was shot. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I also used to call it, at the time, I also called it Bonanza Television. <laughs> I think they like that part. Oh, God. It's, it's with that. It's because it's shot like a show that was shot in the 1950s. Every <laughs> couldn't go handheld. You couldn't have interesting lighting. You couldn't do any. It was all cowboys, you know, everything waste, you know, the typical clean, safe, master singles. I mean, Let's I, carpet. I that, that was considered classic, clean mm-hmm. television. Yeah. Well, yeah. Connecticut, you know, I mean, it's, it's there's no... It's not exactly bursting with vitality. Let's no, just, it was yeah. so perfect. It was so perfect when I heard you describe it like that. I was like, oh, my God. I never thought about that. It, it is just, yes, you are right. You are right. Thank you. <laughs> That's pretty much Connecticut. Not Bridgeport, but the rest of Connecticut. Okay, so if you, if you, were, if you were leading up another Trek show today, yeah. what type of show would you want to make? Or would you want to make another Trek show at all? Um, well, what, what's the one thing we all know, people? Never say never. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you look like an idiot. Uh, all what I you would say it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, all I would say was I would be very confident that if I did, uh, if I was involved, did another Trek show and had any agency within that show to to steer it in in a direction that that i i i felt uh you know was artistically and creatively apropos um i am sure a lot of people would be up in arms and complaining you know i mean that that would be my take is um uh, that uh, I, I I think it would be it would be back to the same old same old to be honest. Mm-hmm. So, so are you telling us that you're not part of Michelle Yeoh's Section Thirty One? Is that what you're telling us? I, I am not part of Michelle Yeoh's Section Thirty One, <laughs> and I hope it's not Mission Impossible. Okay. <laughs> Dread. Go. Dread. <laughs> okay all right this is a softball one okay why why do you think um deep space nine is still resonating so well today and now i mean i know it lends itself to streaming and stuff you know like people like but um content wise well i i would think that i used to say back in the day and this is going back 30 years but but I used to say, you know, uh, the uh, original series, you know, if you look at it with too discerning an eye, is, is unwatchable, mm. right? Uh, it's you know, about. Of, 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 you know, again, the way it's shot, special effects. <laughs> but what works, what works is that holy trinity of... Yes. Spock and McCoy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. I'm not taking away from any of the other actors, mm-hmm. but Kirk, Spock, and McCoy will allow me, if ever I watch an episode, to stay entertained and understand that beyond whatever you know point. You know, whatever social point that was trying to show what, what, wh- wherever its beating heart was, giving us all a lesson in civics and in the human interaction, which is all fine and good. But in terms of entertainment, in terms mm-hmm. of caring, in terms of empathy, it's those three people. Mm-hmm. What does that tell us? It tells us that character is everything. 
Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. Character is everything. You know, I couldn't tell you half of the shit that went on in Game of Thrones, but I cared about some of those characters and I followed their journeys. I didn't care who sat on the Iron Throne. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, big deal. Uh, but I cared about those characters. And I think the thing that I'm most proud of, and again, a lot of it was laid out in the pilot. And even in the kind of hinky first season, there were flashes of it, um, is that Deep Space Nine is a a truly character-driven show. Right. And whatever plot machinations, whatever bigger picture, uh, you know, that, 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 you were supposed to follow and care about it all was filtered through the lens of the people who are involved in the story. Mm-hmm. And that kind of storytelling, I think will never go out of style. If you care. And we gave you so many people to care about. Definitely. You know, yeah. um, the ROMs and the, and you know, well, Ram and, and Nog and, and, uh, Penny. And I mean, I could go on and on and on. Yeah. Even oh, Zial. Zial. Many yeah. Zials. The many, <laughs> the many Zials. Yeah, there were like three of them, right? Did you see it? No, you don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were still upset when she got it. When she, whoever, whoever yeah, played exactly. the part, we still see? were really upset when she got killed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, oh. that, and that's you, you should not have been because you should have just been going. That's not Zial. Who the hell? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't care. I mean, is she a changeling? She is a changeling. But, Especially but, not if you watch any British television. You're so used to them replacing <laughs> actors like all the time. It's just like, oh, that's a new guy. Wait. What's that so mean? that's what I'm. I'm most proud of, without a doubt. And what I used to say again to the writers. I know I said a lot of things to the writers <laughs> doing 26 and we were together all the time. So was that, you know, I, it, it's now a hackneyed phrase, but it was just really coming into, to the, the lexicon at the time was, you know, it's a novel for television. It's a novel for television mm-hmm. and, and, and not a plot driven novel. It was a novel about these people. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. uh, so I think that's what wears well. Yeah, definitely. Because I swear it's one of the only Star Trek that I mean I've seen every episode multiple times. Mm -hmm. But if I start watching, of course you can't finish just one. Like Mm -hmm. Lay's potato chips, you're gonna go into the next three episodes. (laughs) And sometimes I actually don't remember what's gonna happen. I'm so into the story, like where I was. So many of them. I know. I'm like. I'm like. Oh yeah. This is the one where. Wait a minute. What's gonna happen? (laughs) <laughs> and don't, 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 story don't like watch the S9 even before, before you gotta go to work because you oh, will Lord, be late <laughs> made me late so many times I was like yeah so okay wait a minute missed that, get out of here. Missed that bus okay <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, and I still cry every oh. time on the, in the last episode oh yeah oh yeah um, every time I'm it never feels I'm visitor I'm crying. Oh, oh crying on the visitor every and, time. And every Ugly time, every time, you, every time you kill Jazia, I'm done. Every time. Oh, oh God, every yes. Every, every time. time. Oh. And, and Nicole, we accept. Esri, y'all tried. And bless your heart. <laughs> Real hard. I was like, who the hell? <laughs> Where? But she did go after I, war. She won me over when she went after war. Yeah, me too. She went she went toe to toe with war. Oh, oh she, she was going. Him, oh, I'm gonna shut find up. Him. When she told when she told him he talking about going. Leave and me. She, and she said, Oh, shut up. I said, oh, yes. Okay. That's right. Yeah, and she that, went that, and found yeah, him. Yeah. Okay. Oh, shut up. But y'all, 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 y'all did her, you know, you gave her some interesting stuff um, because that must have been a really challenging thing for you guys to. Well, you know, it was the last thing we needed. It's the last Mm -hmm. thing we want. Mm -hmm. I mean, who goes into the seventh season of the show where we had so much momentum? It's like Ron said in the, in the documentary, none of us thought she was going to go. We Mm -hmm. all thought that 
you know, it was going to be worked out. How could it not be worked out? Right. And, and then by the time we realized that um, it wasn't and that she was really going, then it became a scramble to say, no, we're not going to let this defeat the last season of the show. And we're not going to, you know, lose the character, you know, of Dax. It just seemed like we could not lose that character um, because we didn't have time to bring in a whole new character. And we didn't want, you know, we had to give, you know, Worf something to 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 be reacting to besides just grief. Uh, grief was too easy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but you know what? It's all part of the of of making stuff. You know, it, it, it's it's you have to be able to adjust uh, to to the things that you have no ultimately you have no control over so then you got to regain some kind of control over the bigger picture and uh you know i was i mean i was really unhappy that we could not use uh Terry's likeness in the final montage, montage. Mm-hmm. really hurt mm-hmm. my yeah uh, her agents and she didn't want it either. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that, that, that hurt, that mm-hmm. was, it still bugs me that, that she's not represented after all those years she was on the show, but that was the choice that they made. So, yeah. Yeah. I yeah, but we got her, you know. Yeah, like I, you know, she's not in the final montage, but it's the whole body of work that you know that speaks. We got her, mm-hmm. you know, because even when I watch that montage, my brain puts her yeah. in there anyway. When you said that, I was yeah. like, she's not in there. No? <laughs> <Nah. laughs> like, wait, <laughs> she was. <laughs> and I had already pictured her and Wolf's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. I, for real, for real, we could keep you all night, but you have been more than generous with your time for us. And we are so very, very appreciative. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. and hanging out with us. Well, I'm appreciative of, of your passion. You know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a lovely thing to see. I, I have to say, <laughs> I, I hope you uh you guys never lose it i hope that uh not going you con- anywhere you continue to to keep uh this podcast uh in gear for as long as you want it to go thank and you i hope that track keeps on giving you you know your your little boost that 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 it gives you and and that you keep enjoying it and i'm glad to have been a part of it i'm glad to have given you guys some some fun in your life it's a freaking cold cruel world a lot of the time so i know i love my entertainment i got a freaking library full of thousands literally of books i have dvds and blu-rays wherever you look it's 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 one of the things that have been with me my whole life i i so you were well prepared during covid right Hmm? Yeah, you were well, well prepared, prepared doing yes, COVID. I, uh, oh, shit, man. I, uh, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> my wife is like, you know, yeah. He's given him my, my 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 kids when they were little. All they all they used to go was they they used to kind of sing a song: books and movies and DVDs and books and <laughs> books and <laughs> books. So I get it. I get it. I get it. You know, we watch. The Lord of the Rings trilogy, the extended version. Every mm. oh, that's the only version love. to watch. Yeah, but we did it fifteen <laughs> years in a row, and now my kids are married, and my kids are their own, and and we still try to find time to oh. get in a marathon. So I understand, 
enjoyment and being a fan and 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 loving the work and and what it gives you so so thank you for taking us taking the show into your hearts and don't think it's not appreciated and i've enjoyed spending a little bit of time with you and uh continued success ladies thank you so much thank you so much thank you great thanks yeah. And just so you know, whenever we see your name on a show, we're watching. Like, yeah. we're not just stuck in Trek with you. <laughs> we are with you. You know, our writers from DS9, we support y'all all the time. Like, <laughs> I, I definitely uh, appreciate that. That's yeah. really easy to say. <laughs> uh, you know, it was a long day of striking. So this is a nice way to uh, to end the day, you know. So that's what's up. Thank that's you. what's up. So Yvette, mm -hmm. you want to tell people how they can reach us if they have thoughts on some of the things that we talked about today, or if they happen to disagree with the fact that TNG is Connecticut. I mean, they're wrong, but they can disagree if they want to. Um, <laughs> you want to <laughs> tell them how to reach us? <laughs> DS9, the Bronx. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, DS9 is Chocolate City. So anyway. Okay. Oh, <laughs> You can find us at SciFiSisters.com. That's S-Y-F-Y-S-I-S-T-A-S.com. Join us on the Mothership. That's M-U-T-H-A-S-H-I-P. And the Sci-Fi Sisters Book Club, both on Facebook. On Instagram and TikTok, Sci-Fi.Sisters. And we're also on the Twitter at Sci-Fi Sisters. Become a patron of Sci-Fi Sisters today at patreon.com forward slash Sci-Fi Sisters. The Trek Geeks Network presenting sponsor is Fansets. Go to fansets.com for pins and memorabilia for all your favorite franchises. Visit fansets.com and use Trek Geeks, all caps, for your exclusive 10% discount. After listening to this podcast, please rate us and write a review. We may just read it on an upcoming episode. Y'all, it's been so much fun. We got one last shout out to do, and that's for the baddest engineer in all universes. He's Dose the Anonymous One. He's responsible for the music that you hear. Dose, 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 Dose. He has his own theme song, He's and he's our engineer, the bestest. If you need his skills, you can look him up on Instagram at Dose underscore the anonymous underscore the number one. And y'all, that's it for us. We are out of here. Thank you for listening. We love you very much. Much. Peace, love, and hair grease.